Rachel Ewens, uh, in San Francisco. Just to give you a little perspective on me and what I do, some of the companies I've been working at are Forever 21, Lilo, and I'm currently with the company Redbubble. And what I'm here to talk to you about today is what e-commerce needs to learn from the media revolution, which is a very loaded way to explain what I'm talking about. But uh, So let's take ourselves back, go back in time, Think about the days when you would pick up like AOL discs at stores and your internet sounded like um, Some of you may not remember that if you're like millennials. Uh, anyway, so back in that day, you had like three blogs that you looked at, maybe go bug yourself or something, and weren't a whole ton back then. And you just went to all the home pages and maybe if you were real geeky, which you people probably were, you knew what the acronym RSS and XML meant, so you used a reader. But like for the average show, they don't know what those things are. And they still don't. <laughs> but then the desktop publishing revolution hit. Um, all these all these software platforms, these uh, CMS platforms came out, like WordPress and like Blogger and Tumblr that allowed anybody to publish. So, Suddenly it went from there being three blogs to your mom having a blog, and your dad having a blog, and Walmart having a blog. And suddenly it was no longer so scalable for you in consuming information for you to just go to each blog's homepage. Um, yeah, so there were just too many. So what did you do? Well, enter Twitter. Um, and, and Twitter's the example I'm using here, but really nowadays there's lots of ways that we consume this information, including a Flipboard, uh, yeah, lots of ways we're aggregating this content. But but in short, you know, nobody understood what RSS or XML meant. And so it was easy for them when Twitter came around to just hit a follow button and suddenly they were following a blog. And not only were they getting information from that blog, they could also follow their friends and get news filtered through, you know, his taste or her taste. And that became a managed way for people to follow blogs at that point. Um, there were winners and there were losers of this. I think we've seen people like BuzzFeed who don't need their home page to be their home spot uh, do really well. I think if people see, seem like the New York Times not do so well in this model. So we're talking about news, this is about e-commerce, how do these relate? Warning. <laughs> so e-commerce companies, if you're here, if you're in e-commerce, this is happening to you too right now. It's exactly the same and you need to watch out and you need to be ready. You can think about it back in those AOL times again, take yourself back to there. Uh, you know, you only had a few sites that you shopped at. You went to Zappos, and you went to one or two, I don't know, maybe like Zillia's or something like that. That was a thing then. Um, anyway, yeah, so you just go to those home pages and you shop, maybe you subscribe to their newsletter or something like that. Uh, and it was manageable. That's cool. And then, just like the desktop publishing revolution happened, the e commerce revolution happened. And suddenly, you have a WordPress installation, you could have a store. Uh, so we're entering the same type of situation right now where it's it's simply not manageable for us to handle all the stores that we have. Um, we need a better way to search them, we need a better way to follow the stores that we like, and I don't actually have an answer for you yet today on what that is, because I think we're actively in the process of figuring out what the solution is going to be for how we're going to handle this plethora of stores. Um, I threw up here a couple of things that I see as being the main contenders. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with these. Polydor, ShopStyle, Manila Social Commerce, eBay Stores, Amazon, Google, and Pinterest. So I, I don't have the time enough, unfortunately, to go into all of these, but there are certainly a few uh, pluses and minuses that I'd like to talk to about these. I think Amazon's become the default that people, you know, it's almost become Amazon's a synonym for uh, shopping search engine. And, and it's really unfortunate because the problem is, is Amazon is also a manufacturer and seller. And when things do well that are being done through their platform, Amazon doesn't want to rip it off. So it's not the best place for people to be in. If there's anyone from Amazon in the room, I'm sorry, not sorry. It's true. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I, I found this is such a great example. I was actually just so happy to be looking at Karma Loop's uh, eBay store this week. So I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Karma Loop, it's an e commerce site. It's been around for a while. They're strictly e commerce, great place. But I started looking around, and this wasn't even all of them. This is Karma Loop's Amazon store. They have it specially styled for their brand. 
this is their, what is their eBay store I think I had up there. Um, yeah, they have a super great eBay store. They're also on Polygore, on Pinterest. Um, and I think this conversation is especially prescient right now just because Pinterest is about to enter this, this same game. Um, I think we all know that Pinterest is sort of let leak, that purchasing on Pinterest will be coming soon. Um, so I think we really need to stop thinking about things like Pinterest as being a social network and start thinking a lot more about how it's a shopping search engine, because it will be that. Uh, Winilo is a lot more traditionally in that kind of way. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Winilo, but it's in that same sort of spot. Um, okay, so we don't have a ton of time, but I want to tell you guys what the hell you should do. <laughs> There's a couple of key steps that you can start on. Um, the first one is creating really robust feeds. Um, the best way to do this is probably in Google Shopping format. It's the one that's used by a lot of these retailers. More and more of these retailers are uh, pardon, more and more of these types of sites are bringing in people's feeds. It's the best way for them to keep inventory up to date, uh, to get sale information, size information. So look at your feeds. If you need to, hire a feed manager software company to help you. Um, having those strong feeds is very, very important. Secondly, understand the platforms, and there's a lot of them. I didn't even cover them all, but the feed management companies can help you do that too. Um, some of the interesting kind of intangibles of them are Amazon is price sensitive. So if you're selling really high-end products or expensive products, an Amazon store might not be for you. Um, eBay isn't as price sensitive and it's a little more quirky. If you're in that quirky, expensive <laughs> space, it's a great spot for you to be at. Winilo, kind of the new entrance in the market, uh, Winilo skews a lot younger, um, a very mobile audience as well. And then uh, Polyvore is another one I consider in this space. Um, Polyvore is much more high end. If you're a high end company looking to, to reach people, I would, I would investigate into that. Um, I also want to know what your technology is and how it applies to these. Some of these uh, marketplaces operate under CDC, some of them operate under, you actually have to have your fulfillment built in there. So they actually, the person never goes to your site, they fulfill completely through that platform. So you have to be robust enough to be able to handle that. Uh, secondly, hiring good copywriters. I feel like, I, so I've worked at Forever 21, I've worked in fashion for a while, and we would always have these copywriters that would like write these flowery, you know, like descriptions that meant absolutely nothing to a search engine. <laughs> so um, more than ever, when you're going into things like Google Shopping, your product description and your product title really, really, really matters. Not only does it matter, does so anybody have any questions? Yeah. I have a question. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a bit bad, but I'll try and shout. Um, so I work in kind of um, CPG e-commerce, and it mm -hmm. seems really, there's a lot of parallel here between brands trying to sell on walmart.com, amazon.com, all these places, and you're describing kind of fashion world going that way. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Um, one of the things that's happening there is that people are trying to shop more from content and mm -hmm. kind of pulling together, you know, like whole recipes, if you like, and being able to shop that. Do you see that in, in the sort of fashion areas you're talking about as well? Do you see it being even more distributed beyond places like Polyvore and Amazon um, into content more widely? I think I understand yeah. what you're asking. And I, and I know like um, sites like Nilo, where, where it worked for a little while, putting together stories and assembling. Yeah. I think that's the really interesting part of it is I know Winilo originally got its start of being a shopping social network. And so a big part of it wasn't just like open the feed, search the product. A big part of it was actually still maintaining that relationship between the retailer and the customer to where mod cloth or somebody could put together an outfit or say it's pie day, here, six dresses with pies. Um, and I think that's really important because my, my biggest concern when it gets to that, these kind of places is losing brand and losing loyalty. And I know every correct, like, creative director sees those eBay stores and those Amazon stores and is like, <laughs> And I think long term for the brand, like you do have to, to preserve brand, you do have to have that relationship. So yeah, that's one thing I really like about Winilo and that I like about uh, Shop Style and I like about Polyvore is it gives brands still a way to like, express their personality, give the consumer something to follow, maintain that relationship. And I, and I would really encourage brands as they start to get into this space and on these sites, especially the ones that require fulfillment happening directly through them, um, think about how you're gonna get that person wrapped back into that brand because you're probably not getting them on your email newsletter. 
you know, I would think about in their in their email confirmation. Is there some way you can push your social network? Is there some way you can capture them? Because it does. This is a weird space that you you could lose your brand in. Yeah, hope that helps. <laughs> Anyone else? So basically like by your friends and yeah. So it's a really interesting space. It was really interesting while I was working at Winilo because that's part of uh, what I got really excited about there is this idea that you really got to see what your friends were buying and didn't happen to their taste. Well, I'll be around this evening. Uh, if you rate this panel, rate it very high because then I get to come speak to you guys again and have a great Thank you. Have a good night, guys.